This video is about a function with two horizontal asymptotes. That means that the limit as x approaches positive infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity will be two different things. This function will involve square roots though, so I'm going to need to build up your skills regarding square roots before we begin. For example, please remember that if I do the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, this is allowed. It will simply give me the square root of 10. Similarly, if I did the square root of 3 times the square root of x, that's just going to give me the square root of 3x. So if you have two radicals, you can go ahead and do this multiplication. So what about this one? What if I had uh, the square root of 3 times the square root of 2x plus 5? Hmm, hopefully you can see me about to do the distributive property. And as long as both of these are radicals, this will work out just fine. I'm going to end up with the square root of 6x plus 15. Okay, well hold that in your mind. What if I had the square root of 2x plus 5, but I wanted to multiply it by 1 over the square root of x. So again, I could do the distributive property. Both of these are radicals, so there's nothing stopping me from doing that. And uh, let's see, how is that going to work out? So I'm going to have my 2x plus 5. This distributive property, because it's 1 over the square root of x, I'm going to wind up dividing by x. So I'm going to wind up with x here and here, which of course would give me the square root of 2 plus 5 over x. So a skill like this is going to come in handy very shortly. Do you remember how we handled limits like this in previous videos? Normally I would say something like, we need to divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator. But really what we were doing is we were multiplying the, numer the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared. And then we were doing the distributive property. So that was giving us the following. So essentially we were dividing each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. But don't forget that what we were really doing is multiplying 1 over x squared by 1 over x squared. That's important because we're multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the value of the expression. And then we could go ahead and simplify and find the limit. But imagine that we had a square root involved instead. So imagine that Instead of just 2x plus 5 over 3x squared minus 1, we have the square root of 2x plus 5 over the square root of 3x squared minus 1. And I wanted to do something similar. So the highest power of x in the denominator is still x squared. But if I want to divide everything by x squared, I'm going to need to use radicals. So instead of multiplying by 1 over x squared, I would have to multiply everything by 1 over the square root of x squared. And then the rest could work like normal. All right, it's just that there's a big old square root involved now. 
Okay, but the rest of this should look very familiar. And I could go on and simplify these expressions and, uh, you know, I could take limits if that's what I was doing. Okay, but the key is if you have radicals involved, you're going to have to multiply by one over a radical in order to get it inside the radical. Well, we're getting closer and closer to being ready to tackle the actual problem, but not quite. What if we had uh, the numerator without a radical, but the denominator was underneath the square root? So you might think, okay, for the denominator, uh, because it's a radical, I need to do one over the square root of x squared. But you have to make sure that whatever you put in the numerator has the same value so that uh, you're really multiplying by one. But in the numerator, you don't want to have square roots or anything. You just want regular x's. So would this be the same thing? Would 1 over x be the same thing as 1 over x squared? Okay, so let's really focus on that. The question is, does the square root of x squared equal x? All right, really focus on this question. Does the square root of x squared equal, equal x? And the answer is, it depends. Okay, if x is positive, that's one thing. If x is negative, that's something else. So let's start with if x is positive. So the square root of x squared equals x. Let's go ahead and make that assumption and then test it. So if we have the square root of x squared equals x, let's do an example as a, as a test. So let's pick positive 3 as just a typical case. Then that would be the square root of 3 squared is equal to 3, just substituting 3 in for both x's. Is this true? Well, yes it is. Okay, this is working out because 3 squared would be 9 and the square root of 9 is 3. So if x is positive, this is always going to be true. The square root of x squared will equal x. But let's see what happens when x is negative. So let's just recopy the rule for now. The square root of x squared is equal to x. But this time, when we do our example, let's choose a negative value. So let's do negative 3. So that would give us the square root of negative 3 squared is equal to negative 3. Is this true? Well, of course not. You can't take the square root of something and then get a negative number. And uh, if you take negative 3 squared, you're going to get a positive 9. Uh, and the square root of positive 9 is positive 3, not a negative 3. So this is not working. But could we tweak this a little bit and turn it into something that would work? So imagine that I change the rule to be the opposite of x. And really, that's how I would like you to read this. Uh, rather than saying negative x, you should say the opposite of x. Okay, really, whenever you see a, a negative variable, you should think 
that's the opposite of the variable. Anyway, how does this change things? So in the new formula, okay, this is my x now. And my new formula has an extra negative sign out in the front. Okay, so this becomes the opposite of negative 3 or negative negative 3. Suddenly, this is going to work out just fine because the opposite of negative 3 will give you the positive 9. So this now works. So we have two different rules then. One for when x is positive, the square root of x squared is equal to x, and one for when x is negative, the square root of x squared is then equal to the opposite of x. Okay, so we have finally reinforced the skills that we're going to need to be able to solve this problem. We are going to find the limit of this function as x approaches infinity and the limit of the same function as x approaches negative infinity. Let's start with the limit as x approaches positive infinity. We see that the highest power of x in the denominator is this x squared. However, it is under a radical, so I need to multiply by 1 over the square root of x squared in order to get this x squared into the radical. Now, in the numerator, I need to multiply by something that has the same value but does not have the square root in it. Because we are approaching positive infinity, we're talking about positive values of x. And we just discovered that when x is positive, then the square root of x squared is equal to x. So 1 over the square root of x squared will be equal to 1 over x. So let's go ahead and do that multiplication. So let's see, this is going to give us the limit as x approaches infinity. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to have my 3x minus 2 and my square root of 2x squared plus 1. But in the numerator, I'm going to end up dividing everything by x. Whereas in the denominator, I'm going to end up dividing everything by x squared. So when I simplify, this is going to give me 3 minus 2 over x, and then the square root of 2 plus 1 over x squared. So let's go ahead and take the limit of each of these terms and see what happens. So the 3 will just stay a 3, but as x approaches infinity, uh, the 2 over x term will approach 0. Meanwhile, in the denominator, we have the 2, but the 1 over x squared term will approach 0 as x approaches infinity. So that's going to leave us with 3 over the square root of 2. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity. Now let's find the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Remember that when x is negative, the square root of x squared is equal to the opposite of x. So when we multiply the numerator and denominator. In the denominator, I'm going to multiply by 1 over the square root of x squared, just like I did before. But the square root of x squared is equal to the opposite of x. So if I want to have the same value in the numerator, uh, instead of doing 1 over x, I need to do 1 over negative x. Now these are the same. The square root of negative, uh, sorry, the square root of x squared and negative x, those are equal in this case. So the numerator and the denominator will be equal in this case, 
and we still have an expression that has a value of 1. So this is valid. So if we go ahead and perform this, we're going to have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. And I will have my 3x minus 2 and my square root of 2x squared plus 1. But here I am dividing everything by negative x. So I'm going to have negative x here and here. And here I am still going to be dividing by x squared. So let's simplify this. Okay, so the x's are going to cancel each other out, but uh, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so I'm going to have a negative 3. And here I have minus a negative, so this is going to wind up being the same thing as plus 2 over x. And then uh, in the denominator we have this square root the x squared cancels out, we just have 2 plus 1 over x squared. So let's go ahead and take the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So the negative 3 is a constant. As x approaches negative infinity, so x is getting more and more and more negative, like negative a billion. Um, 2 divided by that is going to get closer and closer to 0. So this is still approaching 0. The fact that it's negative infinity doesn't matter. And same thing in the denominator. We will have 2 plus 0. All right, we're dividing by x squared. As this approaches negative infinity, the value is going to get smaller and smaller, approaching 0. Okay, all right, the square root is bothering me. All right, so simplifying one more step, we end up with negative 3 over the square root of 2. So this is the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So notice we have the same function, but we have two different limits on the left and the right. Um, the limit as x approaches positive infinity was positive radical 3 over 2, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity was negative radical 3 over 2. Let's take a quick look at the actual graph of the function. As you study this graph, keep in mind that radical 3 over 2 is about 2.1. So we see that this function has two horizontal asymptotes, one on the right and one on the left. So as x approaches positive infinity, the function approaches positive radical 3 over 2. But as x approaches negative infinity, the function gets closer and closer to negative radical 3 over 2.